Hi y'all, my name is Jim Black. Uh, came in here and just want to basically share uh, a piece of history that I've had for quite some time. We're going on 39 years now and and uh, believe it or not, it's pretty much uh, the idea is now to pass that on to somebody that has great interest in this and enjoy it as much as I have for the last almost 39 years. But, very cool, very cool. Yeah, tell us, show us what's inside. So what I have, back in the 80s, there was a company called Dornis and Dixon. I used to work there. Uh, started out when the company had basically first started out before even the assembly of this handgun. And what it was is, it was the first production 10 millimeter handgun, production 10, 10 millimeter handgun. And uh, I was fortunate enough to start very early in the company and progressed until the day it closed down. And so for all the, the stories and rumors and everybody's had, I'm here to explain a little bit and show you the progression of when the assembly process first started out to where we had gotten a lot of the bugs out, unfortunately, right before the company had gone down. So. And a lot of people are pretty much familiar with that point on. But. So what I have is my own personal handgun that I was fortunate enough to build before I was even old enough to own a handgun legally. And so I started there pretty much when I was 19, late 19, which was probably February of, January or February of 1983. And uh, the actual production part, the, the quote-unquote legitimate uh, production didn't start until April of 1983. So when I started there was the initial runs of the castings, um, the fitment, uh, putting all the pieces together, getting the action timing, all basically working out all the, the original bugs from the production part of it because again the original the original two or three pieces that were made these were all custom made guns from scratch so they were they were a lot of it was uh, more refined than the production version but a lot of it had flaws that had been again worked out throughout the production process mm -hmm. so what I have is when I was 20 well let me back up a little so all of the employees at D&D &D back in the day, one of the perks was that after a year of service, you were able to actually order your own personal firearm. They gave you your own personal firearm as a, hey, this is what we, this is what you guys do on a regular basis. This is basically your thank you. So mine, uh, when I started mine, I was only 20. And I was, again, I wasn't even old enough to own one of these. So I spent an entire year uh, putting this thing together with all of the best of all the production pieces that we had. And so what this is, and let me crack this down because this is actually the other one that I have. But what it ended up with was basically the best pieces of all the best pieces. And so what this is, it's a 10 millimeter. This was shined up with all the, the goodies that we had for all of the real high-end pieces that there was only a few of them made. And then ironically, we also got to pick our own serial number, which I didn't know until right up until the time that this is engraved. So as you can see, I got my own just for me gun. And so again, this took me about a year to put together. And that time, the other irony was, is I was also the test fire and R&D person at 20 years old. And so this is a culmination of all of this. And so what happened when I was initially hired is I did basically all the finish work from casting. And so, by hand, we did all of the finish work and fit it to the actual front of the slide and fit it to the frame. That's what I started out as. And so, one of the owners of the company, Tom Dornis, came up to me one day and uh, 
sat down next to me and he had been watching me do all the fit and finish and he says and, and this is exactly what he said he said I can tell you're a mechanic and I looked at him kind of confused and asked him what he thought that was and he said well you can look at something and take a file or whatever you need to do and make it work like it's supposed to work and he said I think you're in the wrong place and you I'd really like to train you in assembling these things and probably at that time we weren't even actually in the main building that all of the assembly eventually started at after April again I started January February and so by the time we got into the new building uh, he had sat me down quite a bit and explained the functionality and how everything worked and a couple months later I'm actually doing not only the building but I did the test firing of all these things every day and so basically my job consisted of I get there at 7 30 or 8 in the morning I build these things probably three to five a day depending on if we had parts and then from noon till five o'clock I'd go to the shooting range and test fire all the ones that we had built the prior day so on average day I probably had 15 firearms and shot a minimum of 10 rounds through each one of these things and so again this one is a culmination of all that time over a year of all the stuff that I'd seen go wrong and everything else so for all of the brands that are out there some 1300 as they say this is probably I'm not going to say for certain but this is probably one of the most fired brands on the planet this literally has a lot more than 10,000 rounds put through it I can almost assure you that it's it's a lot and so what you're looking at is kind of an oddity because originally these things came with five inch barrels and I'll show you how that all is the stock standard brand 10 was this so this was out of the box 10 millimeter no frills throw it against the wall that's what it was made for and so basically what it came originally with the exception of the shiny side came like this it was a no frills like I said throw it in the mud do all that it was it, it, we we basically were making this as a military replacement for the 1911 back then and that's what the that's what Jeff Cooper wanted to do that's what Tom had intended on doing and that's what we were gunning for basically no pun intended so the idea was not only it was a rugged, durable piece, but you could strip this thing down in the field if, if something went wrong or whatever the case is, clean it out, put it back together, just like a AR-15 or whatever you, want, you know, whatever you had in the field. Problem with this was, even back in 1983, this thing had a 200 grain bullet that was 1,175 feet a second. It would go through multiple walls. <laughs> And they really kind of didn't like that <laughs> but nonetheless it was pretty impressive for how small of a round the thing was for a 10 millimeter so anyway again just going through a little bit of history but this is my own personal gun that I'm actually putting up uh, for sale and what's this and so this just for me gun, the, the, there's a story behind that. That's a, that is the serial number. Right? That is the serial number. That is registered as a. Uh, that is the federal registered serial number for that firearm. So a good majority of them, I'd say 98 percent of them, were all, of course, like the serial numbers, the SM, um, the MP, all that other stuff, and then it had uh, successive serial numbers on them that we just had written down on a piece of paper and then submitted that as far as what the federal regulation was so when I found out that we could actually put our own custom one depending on it had to be you know nine letters or whatever the case it was there to my knowledge was only three of these or four maybe that had custom serials like this uh, this one uh, the gentleman that 
they used to do the barrels, do the ramps on the barrels and all that. He had a custom one, and then one of my builders had a custom one as well, uh, for which who knows where those things ended up. Um, I was told that there was a fourth one. I never did see it, but who knows? I mean, there's a lot of stories, quote unquote, that went around after all it all had closed down as far as what had happened and all this other fun stuff. But yeah, this is, like I said, maybe one of four. I know, actually there were four because Richard, which was our uh, machinist that did all of the fixtures and all that fun stuff for the machining of all these, um, his was a custom as well. So again, there was probably four. Um, I can see you got a lot more parts in there too. Oh my gosh. So being the R&D guy and I got to play with just about everything, I got to fart around with everything and anything and all of the ones that we came out with, the different models, I have just about one of each with the exception of there was a special forces that was, they called the special forces light that was hard chrome. And we made a very short run of them and it became, I had a couple of them, but I was really afraid to shoot them because we had issues with um, porosity in the slides themselves and they would tend to crack right here and they'd break. The, the round was so violent and this thing came back so fast that it would actually bow this thing and it would stress crack this right here. And so the ones that I have, I've shot multiple times, obviously. Um, but so this is a 10 millimeter, this is a special forces one. This is also a special forces, but this one's kind of different because again, like I said, we had an issue with these rounds being so hot that this thing would bow. And so what we came up with is, and you'll see it, is that we actually shaved down this part by probably I don't know a little bit more than a quarter of an inch um, so that the slide would come back farther and the spring would do its job in the recoil part of it and it would take the stress load off of the slide itself so this is probably one of the only ones that I know of that were like this because it didn't end up working out we just ended up putting a stronger spring and there weren't that many of the special forces made anyway um, the ones that it really we were really pushing to do this to and most of the hard chrome slides were cut like this only because we had the issue of these things breaking and so these are both 10 millimeter this one this one's kind of a special one because this is a one of three that I know of uh, Tom Dornis had his own personal that was a 45 um, Richard Lawson that was the machinist guy had one of his personal ones and he made me this one he took a 10 millimeter and opened up the breech and then did a custom barrel so this is the third short 45 there is that I know of and this thing was my favorite this is, I carried this thing for 10 years <laughs> on my side I mean this is a kick to it's shoot because it was, the recoil is so light so it's it's pretty neat and again the difference being and I'll show you in a second so these are four inch barrels it wasn't a common thing because again they didn't make a whole lot of the special forces um, they generally came um, either like this or they came in a in a kit with a long slide as well and so this is a five inch barrel. This is the standard five inch barrel. And then this is what they called the marksman special. This was, this is the long 45. So this is a long five inch barrel 45. And the only one that's not finished in this whole entire thing, and there's probably a reason that I did it, is this is the marksman special match. So this one I had this one we were going to make into a competition gun and it never got finished so I have shot it several times I've rebuilt it and all it is is changing the springs and changing the ejector in it um, but this has been shot several times as well so all of these in progression have been shot hundreds of times just to see what on these things you know parts failure would be what and so Obviously, you could see the other differences between the two is 
some of these have a pin with a spring on it. The original, most of these had this setup. That's not going to come out for me. Is it? Yeah, it so this is basically the the uh, spring for the slide, the recoil spring for the slide. Now, this had a multi-purpose. It not only was the recoil and all that with the buffer tube and, and whatnot, but this thing also had a built-in screwdriver. And this was on most of them that we had for production because the idea was, these being all early, that you can take this thing out and you can adjust the sights with it. These were the later sights, the very early ones which this was kind of a lost cause was they were all Allen screws, the real early ones were. And so this came into play obviously after we'd started machining these. And this was probably early 84, mid 84 is when we started doing all of that. I like the pins personally because this thing was a pain in the rear end to put together <laughs> and it really served no purpose other than the fact that, you know, it just gave added extra spring. So, that being said, like I said, I got to do all the R&D stuff. So you can imagine out of the whole entire year, five, five days a week, on average I was shooting 150 to 200 rounds a day, depending on, and all of these went through brutal, brutal, brutal regiments on to see if we could break the dog on thing. And that's how a good majority of the late um, friends that were put together, that's how they benefit from all Okay. That. Even so, this. So, so anyway. you've done some work to this stuff, preparing yep. it for sale. Can just a yeah. quick rundown of what you've done. So so basically what I've done, this this is sat in this case, believe it or not. This is the original case that I had throughout all the times that this thing was shot. This thing is like 39 years old. And so over time, obviously sitting in the box, I went through everything and made sure all of these fit this frame. Because one of the things was, and like I told you originally, is my original job was fitting the frame to the slide. So every one of these are different. So for all of you brand owners out there, every one of these were custom guns. So there's not really, I mean, there were real similarities to them but there wasn't two identical alike. I mean, they were all different. They all had different characteristics. It just, it depended on a, a whole plethora of different things is how the, the gun operated. And that was one of the deals why, you know, it was part of the deal that we had put 10 rounds to make sure everything went as it should. Um, but also, like I said, it's just, it's, it's over time, I just wanted to make sure that I went through everything um, they all fit, they all work properly, they all eject, eject the rounds like they should. Um, the two tins that I haven't had on this thing for probably a good 20 years, I just had refitted to this frame and shot it last week, so everything works. Now this particular one right here, and I think originally we had talked is the one that has had the most rounds to it. I used to silhouette shoot this thing. Um, this thing is every every day when I went to the range this had 10 rounds put to it so regardless if it was the long barrel or as I showed you I think it was this barrel right here this sucker has I mean if you had a 10,000 round barrel this is it <laughs> I mean this thing was abused to death with all the normal rounds that even to the point where when I would go out silhouette shooting, I would take boxes, probably five boxes of Norma rounds and literally hammer the lead out of them, take a, uh, one of the uh, bullet hammers, take them all apart, measure all the powder, do all the whole thing, did your Excel spreadsheet before Excel was even a thing, before computers were even a thing, and uh, shoot this thing to where it got so hot that the slide would start having issues going back and forth. <laughs> it had to cool down. I mean, it, w it would get that hot. But this sucker's had a lot of rounds through it. So what are the other, how many, you have three other barrels? I in actually there? have four, four other barrels. Actually, three of the five inch. Now, <clears throat> again, you have the four inch, 
the five inch and something that probably only a couple of people on the planet have ever seen but we actually made three six inch barrels I have two of them and the reason for the six inch barrel is we had a guy that uh, we were going to sponsor to do competition and we were going to make him a pin gun Actually, we ended up supplying him the parts. He finished the whole thing because we didn't have time to do it production-wise. So out of all of it, I ended up with two and the actual weight for the pin gun, which I still have the bushing on this thing, but you can see how that all goes. And so it was supposed to be fitted to the slide itself. That's cool. Yeah, fitted to the slide itself and then set screwed or whatever the case is. And... Um, gone from there depending on if he wanted a a uh, six inch barrel with a five inch slide but you could actually even put this on the smaller slide and have this thing to where it's it the barrel protrudes right at the end that's cool yeah so so give us a rundown of the other parts you've got i know you've got <laughs> like a tupper or a, like oh my a, gosh. almost like a tackle box looking thing all right so you guys out there that are going to watch this For the bren owners that here comes here comes the holy grail of oh my god i can't believe I, this guy actually has this so i actually do have one of the original this was given to me by richard lawson and i'm he's, i'm sure he's just going to cringe if this thing goes with it but this is actually one of the uh, made to fit this gun um, holsters uh, by W. M. Davis. This was probably, I had only seen maybe six of these things done. You could custom order them from him. And we had a, uh, a mock-up gun that we used to throw around in the shop all the time just for this. Um, so there is this. And then as far as pieces, so originally these barrels, like I said, there was a four or five, these were custom sixes. This is how this barrel was born. So this came from the manufacturer, the rifling was done in this blank and they got to the machine shop and it would be whittled down to probably this and you can still see there's still dicom on there and the whole nine yards and then it would be actually done down to this and then from there Again, every one of these things were custom, so these were all fitted to the slide itself. And that's a 10, 10 millimeter blank? It's a 10 millimeter blank, yes. Yep. That's so cool. This is a 10 millimeter as well. 45 wasn't, I mean, the, the main selling point for this whole entire platform was a 10 millimeter. So the 45 was just kind of a sidebar thing. It was a lot less expensive to shoot. Norma rounds were really hard to get, and it was, I mean, they were. They were very, very hard on the pistol. So for those who had gotten a lot of the earlier pistols, they found out that unfortunately some of the earlier guns, uh, they found the weakest link because of the round. The round was so stinking hot that, I mean, it would beat this thing to death. And there was a lot of parts that were broken on those. There's probably a lot of people that have guns in their safe that only work on single action because it broke parts in the inside of the gun. So anyway. So I have that, all the barrels. I've got the, the pin, obviously. Now again, this is the original case that I have had since I worked there. I do have magazines. Believe it or not, I got five of these things. For all you guys that wanted the 10 millimeter mag, I have three of them. And that was a later thing. And you know, I can't apologize for something that happened 35 years ago, but I could tell you exactly why that happened. Um, but the way cool thing is parts. And so, out of all the time that I did this, here's where you guys are going to start foaming at the mouth. I have spares of everything. Hammers, triggers, the trigger bars, which these are made of unobtainium, unless you have a 3D printer and a really good person that knows how to do hardening. Um, and of course, these little babies. These are the things that everybody... Uh, would probably love to have two or three of and the pieces that break the most which is this little beauty and this is what creates the the double action single action on the pistol and basically this thing rides on here when 
when you pull the trigger it pulls this part back pulls the hammer back it gets to a point and drops off and then that lets the hammer go forward so this is probably the only two single pieces unless you got a hold of them somewhere else out there and so obviously you can tell by all of this there's multiples of everything So all this stuff is going in the lot. It's all going together. This is all going together as as a as a unit. That's what the intention is. Um, and talking to Richard, um, that obviously providing me with some of the really neat things that I didn't even know he had after all these years. Um, yeah, it probably my feeling is that as a collective and the history of this thing it's better to sell it all as one deal now here for the three minutes I'm going to tell you guys this is the best part of it I also have probably every wood grip that we ever made for this thing including a couple of spare Jeff Cooper ones which some of them are beat up but I have what got uh, six I got nine sets of these things. That's awesome. Yeah, these were these were going on gun brokers. Somebody had these things on the brand ten for them, six hundred bucks a pair. Oh my gosh! No lie. And I t I had one gentleman contact me, and I told him, look, as much as I would love to do that, I want to get rid of it all in one shot. So this is a chance for any of you diehard brand guys. I will give you letters of when you know, I started. You want to assemble that real quick? Yep. Letters of when I started. I have two different people that worked in the machine shop that will verify it, and the guy that did the barrels still. But uh, that's my basic. That's my. That's been my baby for 38 years. Along with this, guys, I actually have one of the original, and it's beat to death. Sorry, but it's the original 1985 guns illustrated. And these were really, really early, and the way you could tell in a lot of the earlier guns is the fit and finish was horrible, and you can actually see it. You could see the porosity in the tops of the slides and all that. Even in the MP model, you could see that none of this garbage was ever finished. So these were really, really early guns. Um, all the later ones, the concentration was not to make it a really fancy, but at least make it nice. And that was part of the reason why when Tom had, and I had originally met and he was watching me do this, that's how I got sucked into doing all of the other R&D stuff. So we actually did make them better progressively for all you guys that got later guns. The early ones, sorry, that wasn't me. That was a different, that was Kevin or whatever that guy's name was, was building this. But this goes with it. It's all good. So... Very cool. Well, yeah. someone's going to get lucky. Yep, and obviously through you or any questions that anybody has for this, I'll answer anything that they want to know. Um, I know there's a lot of diehard guys out there, but I can tell you from the day it started, we started production, till the day, unfortunately, that it ended, I was there. And All right. So this is a once in a lifetime for any of you guys, even the ones that had number one and number two, and I've talked to you guys, but honestly, this one's better.